Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk about error handling and logging. For that, I want to revisit the code I made in the Actix to do service video series. If you haven't watched that yet, the link is in the description. So let's take a look at the to do service app. Everything looks fine if there are no errors. We have the correct status code and the JSON response. But what will happen if we cannot connect to the database or if we get an unexpected error? Let's stop the Postgres container to find out. Now let's try the curl command again. We got an empty response from the server. And if we look at the server to try to diagnose what happened, we can see this ugly error. It says that the thread panicked with the message we wrote, error connecting to the database. There is also a hint there. We can set Rust backtrace to 1 in the environment variables to display the backtrace. So let's try that quickly to see the result. Try curl again and we can see a longer and uglier stack trace message. Most of it is happening in the Tokyo runtime. It's difficult to tell where is the error in our code. It is there, but we can do better. We should respond with the correct status code and maybe show an appropriate message to the user. So let's first find the error message. The error comes from the expect we wrote when we try to get a client from the pool. What expect does is just panics with a custom message when you get the error in them. Let's get a quote from the Rust Lang book. It's advisable to have your code panic when it's possible that your code could end up in a bad state. The bad state is not something that is expected to happen occasionally. Your code after this point needs to rely on not being in this bad state. In examples, it is understood that a call to a method like unwrap that could panic is meant as a placeholder for the way you want your application to handle errors, which can differ based on what the rest of your code is doing. Similarly, the unwrap and expect methods are very handy when prototyping before you are ready to decide how to handle errors. When failure is expected, it's more appropriate to return a result than to make a panic. So let's replace the use of expect and unwrap from our code by leveraging the result monad. First, I will create a module for the errors and I will create a custom error for the application. It will be a public struct called app error and we want to separate the error messages. There are some error messages that we can show to the user while others should only be in our logs. It will have a message attribute for the user something like unable to create the to-do item and let's make it an optional string and we can also have the cause of the error like the database connection failure as an optional too. We can also create an enum to enumerate different error types so we can do different actions based on them like a different status code. Let's call it app error type. For now we can have a database error and also a not found error. I will also create another struct for the user facing response. I will call it app error response and it will just have the error message as a string and we will need to serialize this. Now let's add the module to the main file. Good. Now Actix has this handy trait called response error that allow us to convert our custom error to a response. We just need to make our struct implement that trait. They are just two functions, status code that will return the appropriate code based on the error, and error response that will return an instance of the response. For the status code will be easy, we can do a match against the error type. For the DB errors we can return the status code, let's import that, and use internal server error 500 for now. And for the not found error the status will be not found 404. Now for the response, we want an HTTP response. We can build one, pass the status code by calling the second method and also return a JSON for the user facing error, the app response with the error message. Besides response error, we also need to implement display and debug for our error struct. For debug, we can use the derive macro just like that. 
I can also implement a function for the message in case the optional value doesn't exist and I need to show a default error message. This can be done with a match on itself. In case some user facing message exists, I can just return a copy of that string. If the message doesn't exist, I can set that default message based on the app error type. For the error not found will be the requested item was not found. Let's format the code a bit and for other errors, the default will be an unexpected error has occurred and we can call the method here. Now to implement display, let's import format and this is the signature for format. It receives self and a formatter. Inside we need to use the write macro, pass the formatter. The second argument will be the placeholder for debug and the third one self. We are just taking advantage of the debug method that we previously derived. Cool. We are done with our custom error. I just need to fix the import for the format that comes from the standard module. Now let's first try to get rid of the unwrap after creating the prepare statement. Let's format the code a bit. Now prepare returns a result with either the prepare statement or a database error. We just need to convert that error to our custom app error. We can use the map version for the error case. It will receive the original error, the database error, and I just need to create an instance of our app error based on that. Let's import it. Now for the user facing error, in this case, I just want the default error message. So I will use none. For the cause, we could get that from the original error. I can just call to string on it. Lastly, the error type. Let's import that and it will be DB error. I need to wrap the cause in sum since it is an optional value. Now this should return a statement, but instead I have a result. This is the perfect scenario for the question mark operator. This operator is just a shortcut for a match. It will either get a statement or make the function return the error right away. You can see I have an error there. It says it cannot convert the error to the standard IO error. So I just need to replace that in the signature. We'll get rid of the expect later. For now, let's try our code. Cargo run. The database is still down. And let's try with a curl command. We are still getting the same result. So the error is happening before that. Let's go to the handlers. And this is the error we are seeing. So let's do the same thing. Map error and return the instance of app error. Now, instead of returning just the responder, we need to return a result with either the response or the app error. Now we can simplify this matcher. I just need to map the result of the database call. On success, I will get the to-dos and it will already be wrapped on a result. I forgot to, to wrap the calls in the sum for the optional. I'll do that and we are done. Now, Let's try again with the curl command. We now have the JSON response with the unexpected error response. We also have the correct status code 500, but nothing is shown in the terminal. So we will need to fix that later. For now, let's continue with the unwraps. Let's copy that code on the other methods. We also need to change the signatures to have a result. Again, the result can be simplified, but we also need to change it in our DV code. You can see already that I am repeating a lot of code. We can create a method instead of having it as an anonymous function. So let's create that on app error. This function will be for the DV error. It will receive something that implements to string and will return app error. So I will just write the same body. Then I can replace it everywhere like this. Next. We still have some usage of the IO error. We can easily replace that with app error. In this case, I could use the custom message for the user, but I don't have a cause for the error since in this case, I return an error because of the empty result. So I could just set it as a non error or even leave this empty. And again, this is a DB error. The next instance of IO error is different. We can get rid of that by just returning a boolean directly. So let's change the signature. I can change the matcher so it returns true if it was updated 
and false otherwise. You can continue refactoring here and use map for the check to do. This will be even simpler. Map will just return if it was updated. So I can use that in the result. Okay, we are done with that. Now let's do a bit of cleanup and try the code. It still works as before. Now let's fix the server logs. For that, I'll add a couple of dependencies. The first one, the structure logs library, slog, is really flexible and it will allow me to add context to the logs, then a module to output the logs to the terminal. And the last one is the asynchronous implementation. Back in the main file, we can create a function to configure the logger. This may seem a bit confusing, but bear with me. First, we need a decorator for the terminal output. A decorator is just a design pattern. You can look that up, it is really useful. But basically, this will add a nice format to the log. I will run cargo build just so Visual Studio Code can detect my new libraries. Okay, so now I can import logger from slog and I want the terminal decorator. So I will build a new instance like this. Then I need a drain, console or terminal drain. A drain for slog. It's just the way it refers to the destination or output of the logs. So we'll create a full format instance and pass the decorator. We use fuse, so it panics if something goes wrong. If there is something wrong here, we want to know right away. Then I can wrap that drain with the async module. Now I can create a root logger and I can add some context to it. All other loggers that I create will have this context. For that, I will use the macro O. It's just a convenience to create a key value pair. I will add the key V for version, and then I can get the version of the app from the environment variable. That's in the cargo package version variable, and I can just return this. Let's create a variable for the logs and call the config method. Now we can replace our print line macro with the proper login. I will import the info macro to replace it. I also need to provide the log instance as parameter. Now let's build and run the server again. And we can see a nice log here. The log level info, the message I initially had, and the version of the app as context. Cool. Now I want to have this logger available for the handler. For that, I need to use the app data again. So let's create a new struct for our app data or app state. It will include both the connection pool and the logger. So I can just instantiate that, include the pool and copy the logger. Let's import the app state and we are good. Now I need to replace the signatures of the data for all the handlers and get the pool from there. Replace every instance. Good. Now I want to have a log when I get an app error. So let's modify the map error body again. I need another closure that will still return the same thing, but it will log the error before it. So I need the logger here. I can provide more context to the log by creating a new instance of the log, like a child or a sub log. In this case, I can provide the name of the handler. Then inside the closure, I can create a log critical with the create macro. Just pass the sublog and the message. Actually, we can do better and even add more context to the error. I can get the cause like this. Now I just need to pass the original error as a parameter and we are done. Let's try that, run the server, call curl, and we can see the critical error message here. It has a custom message, the cause of the error along with the handler and the version of the app. Perfect. Now, I just need to add this everywhere. Again, as always, we can move the process to get the client to a function. The function will receive the pool and the logger and will return a result with either a client or an app error. So I can cut and paste this here. Then call get client, passing a copy of the pool and the logger. The function must be async. In this case, we import logger and we are done. Let's try the app again. Everything looks good and I can replace this everywhere. Back to the DB module. I removed the unwrapped calls, but I still have the spec. Here I can just do the same thing as above. 
and replace it everywhere. Now I also need to intercept the final result after the call to the database method. So I do basically the same thing since I have the app error. I can use the cost directly here, but this time let's use error instead of critical. I also need to create an instance of the log with the handler context everywhere. Try again. Good. Now let's create another function for that last closure. It will receive a logger and return another function with the same signature as my closure. It receives an app error as a parameter and returns the app error again. But this time I need a pointer. So let's use box. Box will allocate space in the heat for my closure. So I can just paste the closure here, wrap it in box new, then I must move the ownership of the log variable to the closure by using move. And now I can use the method and replace the closure like this. Copy that everywhere and we are done. Let's test the app again. I will start the database and let's drop the tables to force another kind of error. Got the unexpected error 500 and the correct error message with the cause and the correct handler. And that will be all for this video. In the next video, I will tackle test automation. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos. It will encourage me to keep doing more and better videos. Thanks for watching.